Uh, dear friends and colleagues, uh, welcome to the Kadevesco session in the 2022 ACPM meeting, which is held in Irkutsk, a Russian city near Lake Baikal. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak with you in this meeting. Uh, my name is Farid Beryalov. I am a professor of the Department of Geriatrics and Pharmacology in the Russian Medical Academy of Continuous Education. Uh, because of travel restrictions in different countries, our meeting will be virtual, and we invite colleagues to join our session. <clears throat> uh, today's meeting, we will be talking about mechanism, diagnosis, and treatment of comorbid cardiovascular diseases and mental disorders. Uh, the agenda of our session uh, includes a nine scientific report, and uh, I invite uh, Dr. Alexei Sumin from Russia to present him inside on the personality. Dear colleagues, dear colleagues, Magilevich, I am very glad to speak at this international conference and talk about our ideas in one of the areas of psychosomatic medicine in type D personality. Uh, currently, the trend in medicine is the evolution of the general concept. Previously, there has been a transition from focusing on pathogenesis and value medicine, which is evaluating the effectiveness of treatment from the point of the patient's view. The patient-centered approach considers the patient as a person. The patient must participate in making a decision about the method of his treatment, which is already enshrined in many international recommendations. This paradigm improves patient satisfaction, adherence to treatment, and ultimately treatment outcome. A natural conclusion from such paradigm it is necessary to take into account the personal characteristics of the patient, which can significantly affect all of the above factors of the patient-centered approach. One of the currently distinguished types is personality type D, characterized by a combination of negative excitability and social inhibition. Such patients are characterized by a somewhat gloomy view of the environment. In other words, this condition can be characterized as pre-depression. It's not surprising that such patients note a lower quality of life, poor adherence to medical recommendation, which in itself reduces the effectiveness of treatment with the patient-centered approach. Meta-analysis published in 2012 summed up the discussion. It has been shown that type D was associated with the development of different or non-fatal myocardial infarction in coronary patients, but not in patients with chronic heart failure. Uh, subsequently, doubts were expressed about the validity of assessing type D as a dichotomous indicator. It was proposed to evaluate its influence taken into account as cause on its subscales. At present, a meta-analysis has been performed with the recalculation of the effect type D using this method. We are pleased to note that data from our research team were also used in this analysis. As we can see, the influence the type D on the maze numbers in patients with coronary artery disease has been confirmed with this method too. Another factor influencing the relation between personality type D and prognosis in the, uh, is the age. On this slide we see that in all age groups up to 70 years, males occur more often in patients with type D than without it. Apparently in all the age groups, the influence of other factors such as comorbidity and socioeconomic factors predominates. Among 
mechanism that determines the adverse effect of type D on the prognosis, two groups are distinguished. Biological, these are, uh, sorry, these are change in the body during prolonged psychological distress characteristic of this type persons and behavioral, primarily an unhealthy lifestyle. Intermediate results of this mechanism can be assessed in clinical study. So in the left graph, uh, according to our data in the SS study, the persons with personality type D, uh, more pronounced calcification in the coronary arteries, arteries was noted during computed tomography. Uh, in the right graph, in coronary patients type D was associated with the higher prevalence of coronary atherosclerosis. Contemporary technologies make it possible to evaluate more subtle changes in the coronary arteries. So, in the study of Chinese office, optical coherence tomography shows that IP associated uh, with all signs of atherosclerotic plaque uh, vulnerability in coronary patients. Uh, the same group of authors showed that uh, in prospective follow-up of patients, personality type D was associated with the development interest in neoatherosclerosis after PCI. Thus, at present, the adverse effect of personality type D on the prognosis in coronary patients is no longer controversial. Another question is whether it is possible to somehow influence the prognosis in such patients. The personality traits are stable, characteristics that can hardly be modified all the time. And for type D that it has been shown that it is quite stable during long-term observation. Indeed, in coronary patients, after eight-week course of stress-limiting therapy, it was possible to achieve a decrease in scores of the NA and SI subscales. At the same time, it was not possible to achieve a decrease in the number of patients with personality type D. On the other side, step wise psychotherapy led to a reduction in depressive symptoms in a subgroup of patients with type D, but not uh, entire cohort as a whole. That is, the possibilities of influencing on people with personality type D still exist. Therefore, we focused and uh, on the assessment of coping strategies for personality type D. According to our data, in young healthy individuals, the type D was associated with the predominance of such coping strategies as distancing, escape and avoidance, and more rare use the positive reappraisal. Multiple regression anal analysis confirmed an independent relationship between maladaptive coping strategies and personality type D, which can also be noted during the root analysis. A natural question arises. Do these associations have clinical significance? This question was received in recent study from China. As we see in this study, in patients uh, after, after PCI and inadequate coping strategy acceptance resignation was one of the factors mediating the influence of personality type D on the development of mass during uh, one year. 
Uh, so, in our opinion, the goal of behavioral intervention in patients with personality type D should be training, yoga, and increasing compliance with medical recommendations. Another direction is the impact on the maladaptive coping strategies, the formation of more adequate strategies for coping with stress. Uh, currently, there is no approved psychological interventions for personality type D. Research in this area is ongoing. We can note that the great contribution of scientists from Asia to the development of this direction mm -hmm. in recent years, from our country, from China, for example. In our opinion, it is advisable to combine our efforts both to study the fundamental mechanism as the influence of personality type D, including the assessment of the genetic and epigenetic factors, and to develop methods of behavioral therapy in patients with personality type D. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for interesting uh, meet. Uh, and uh, I want uh, a question to Alexei Sumin. It is necessary to study personal traits and disorders if they can cannot be changed. Uh, yes, I think we uh, should should uh, be the correction of accessing reaction to stress and uh, uh, another direction impact on the maladaptive coping strategies and uh, i think this um, behavioral theory may help our patients with type d uh, uh, improve his outcome Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. And I introduce next speaker, uh, Gracel Angelika Putri from Indonesia and colleague. Department of Internal Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia from Jakarta, Indonesia. Today, I am with my senior and my teacher, Dr. Irman Firmansyah, Dr. Edward Faisal, Dr. Rudi Putranto, and Dr. Hamzah Satri would like to present our mini review. Let me share my slide. Okay, this is the title of our mini review. The title is Cortisol Level in Patients with Depression After Myocardial Infarction. So we know that uh, acute myocardial infarction is an event that can be stressful for some patients because uh, affected uh, their quality of lives. And some patients also develop some symptoms of depression and anxiety from acute myocardial infarction. From the data that I found, one in five patients with myocardial infarction or MI develop major depression during hospitalization. And the prevalence of depression itself uh, post myocardial infarction varies from 7.2% until 47%. So it is a huge uh, prevalence. Um, why we should learn about depression after myocardial infection? Because there are increased risk of subsequent event and premature death in patients with depression after MI. Also risk of revascularization increase in those patients. From the research uh, that conducted by Murphy et al. 2013. Uh, they conducted a research 12-year follow-up study of 170 female of acute myocardial infection and CABG. Uh, they found that the mortality rate was highest in those whose depression symptoms worsened in the two months after uh, hospital discharge. 
So uh, depression in patient uh, after myocardial infection could be mild or major depression. And the symptoms commonly resolve in early convalescence, uh, such as from hospital discharge until two or two until four months after discharge. But some patients also uh, develop uh, depression until uh, forever. It could be an acute response triggered by MI. Uh, we know that MI could trigger the activation of pro-inflammatory cytokines, the autonomous nervous systems, and hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or HPA axis. Study from Weber et al. observed that CAD patients who scored high for depression showed dynamic daily cortisol patterns. So uh, today we uh, discussed about the depression after myocardial infection. There are some mechanism of uh, depression after myocardial infarct. Uh, these are the mechanism that I found. The first mechanism is serotonin dysfunction. The second mechanism is gut microbiota imbalance. The third mechanism is HPA axis. And the fourth mechanism is inflammation. The first mechanism is serotonin uh, dysfunction. We know that serotonin is a neurotransmitter found in the central and peripheral nervous system. Most of serotonin is produced in the intestinal tract. 90% of them is distributed to intestinal chromatin cells and 5% is detected in the enteric nervous system. And serotonin works by binding to its receptors, with, which is a key regulator to control emotion in the hippocampal region and dendritic gyrus. So about the serotonin dysfunction, Dysfunction of serotonin causes abnormalities in brain related to mood, memory, and learning. Uh, some studies also observe that serotonin increase in intestinal tract and peripheral blood after MI. Um, there are some serotonin receptors found in the heart, locating in cardiomyocytes, vagus nerves, and sympathetic nerves. And increase serotonin in peripheral can induce platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction leading to thrombosis. And during MI, the synthesis of serotonin in the intestine and metabolisms in the brain are disordered. So there is uh, an increase in the intestine, serotonin in the intestine, and decrease serotonin in the brain, uh, leading a low level serotonin in the hippocampus and causing depression. The second mechanism is gut microbiota imbalance. Uh, recently, there is increasing evidence indicates that gut microbiota is associated with nervous system. The mechanisms are the change of the microbiota composition. The change of microbiota composition can lead to uh, increase the permeability of intestinal barrier, activate the inflammatory response, regulate the release of monoamine neurotransmitters, change the function of HPA, and modify neurotrophic factors. Together, they uh, can lead uh, to depression. Um, the study from Wu et al. 2017 also showed that the damage of gut microbiota in rats uh, after a myocardial infection and the link between gut microbiota, the heart, and the brain can alter HPA axis function and lead to depression. Uh, the third mechanism is uh, HPA axis and sympathetic system in depression. We know that uh, HPA axis is an important part of the neuroendocrine system and regulates various activities of the body. During stress, such as after myocardial infection, hypothalamic neurons can secrete uh, CRH or corticotropin releasing hormone, which promotes the release of adrenocortical hormones in the anterior pituitary, thereby promoting the synthesis of lipocorticoid by the adrenal cortex. So the cortisol also increases. Uh, the fourth mechanism is inflammation. Uh, we know that uh, acute 
infection or acute inflammation, chronic inflammation can cause uh, pro, uh, increased pro-inflammatory marker and reactions such as the NF alpha, EL17, EL6, and CRP. Uh, when MI occurs, there is also an increased uh, pro-inflammatory marker and reaction. Pro-inflammatory marker may cause uh, cerebral endothelial leakage and the affected blood-brain barrier induces a neuroinflammatory reaction which is believed leading to depression. Uh, moreover, it is reported that the NF alpha also can contribute to the pathogenesis of depression by activating HPA axis and neuronal serotonin transporters and depletions of tryptophan. Tryptophan is the precursor of serotonin. Um, so uh, this is the risk factors affecting depression after MI. Uh, there is some risk factors that I found. The first one is history of depression, and next is young population, especially in female, and then low socioeconomic status, smoking, and obesity. Uh, so what about uh, cortisol? We know that uh, cortisol uh, increase in patients with uh, depression or uh, increase in patients after myocardial infection. Uh, actually, what is cortisol? Cortisol is one of hypothalamus pituitary adrenal or HPA axis hormone that secreted from adrenal gland in response to stress. Um, Actually, the association between stress and depression is already explored, but uh, the specific uh, the specific data about cortisol level in patients with depression after myocardial infection is scarce. Uh, I found one study that uh, that. Uh, uh, conducted some research in cortisol post myocardial infection. The study uh, was from Wilkowska Alina et al. 2019, and they found that uh, there is no significant difference between depressed on and non-depressed group in either morning or afternoon cortisol concentration on the fifth day of myocardial infection, uh, but there is a significant difference in the diurnal profile of the cortisol between them. So the non-depressed group showed a normal cortisol secretion uh, rhythm, but the depressed group showed flattened daily rhythm of cortisol. Uh, as you can see in patients with a longer duration of depression. So for the conclusion, uh, we know that the several mechanisms can cause depression after MI, such as serotonin dysfunction, gut microbiota imbalance, inflammation, and HPA axis. It's my presentation. <clears throat> uh, the title of my presentation is Optimization of, of Psychological Distress Treatment Using for CAM Classification. Uh, drug selection in presence of multimorbidity is a different task, a difficult task for physicians. Uh, the long lists of contraindications, warning, and precautions in drug instruction. Uh, short section and guidelines are inconvenient for practice when physician must quick sell optimal drugs for patients with comorbidity. Uh, let's take a look at a few popular drug classification. Uh, the fourth list combines positive and negative labeling as A, B, C, D of drugs chronically prescribed to all the patients. Uh, the fourth classification has been proposed for reducing polypharmacy in elderly multimorbid patients. Uh, for the list updated every one or three years, now we use 2021 version. Uh, 
Uh, the next uh, popular FDA classification divides drugs into classes A, B, C, D, and X, dependent on the risk to the fetus and new newborn. Uh, FDA not supported this classification from 2015, but its modifications are used until now in a few countries. A recent Center for Education and Research in Therapeutics uh, maintains the drug list uh, that have a risk of cuter prolongation and cardiac arrhythmias. Uh, this classification divides drug into groups with conditional, possible, known, and high risk of malignant arrhythmias. As you know, sudden death is real when QT interval is longer than 500 milliseconds. And now you see uh, FOCAM classification is a universal drug classification system uh, based on effects of different drugs on comorbidities. FOCAM is abbreviation of fit for comorbidity. Uh, FOCAM classification unites uh, the above mentioned systems and divides drugs into five classes based on the influence on comorbidities. Uh, class A includes drugs that have pronounced positive effect on comorbid disease. Uh, class B includes drugs that uh, may have a mild positive effects. Class C uh, includes drugs without any significant effect on or contradictory effects. Uh, class D consists of drugs with rare and severe adverse effects. And class X include drugs with severe life-threatening adverse effects. Uh, here you see the 12th edition of book with FOCAM classification. Uh, it is published in this year in Russia. Here is an example of classification of psychotropic drugs and comorbid metal disorders and somatic diseases. Uh, for example, uh, valproic acid is approved for migraine prevention. On the other hand, antipsychotic increase increased risk of sudden death, especially in patients with heart failure. Among patients with depression following recent acute coronary syndrome, treatment with acetylopram compared to with placebo uh, resulted in a lower risk of major adverse cardiac events after eight years. Uh, also, a positive effect of drug is shown in a randomized trial. Uh, the number of patients was small, only 300 people. Therefore, in order to classify acetylopram in class B or A, the results must be confirmed in large uh, randomized trial. Uh, this meta-analysis presents uh, the comparative effects of uh, sotitural antipsychotics on uh, the acute interval. But how to use this information in practice? It's very inconvenient. <clears throat> and we presented modified algorithm for lowering the risk of cardiac arrhythmia during treatment with psychotropic medications. Uh, the original algorithm on the left side, and we consider that modified algorithm is more simple and uh, more practical. Uh, many drugs can significantly increase QT intervals, the risk of malignant ventricular arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. Uh, and uh, here the classification divides antidepressants, uh, benzodiazepines, and antipsychotics according its influence on QT interval. Uh, in order to, to quickly select optimal drugs in patients with comorbid diseases, uh, this classification was introduced in Cardiac Expert uh, 2 version, a well known program for mo mobile devices on Android. <clears throat> this program is available on Google Play and is used in many countries. So, FOCAM classification unifies existence narrow classifications, uh, simplifies information from guidelines, and helps to select optimal drugs for patients with comorbidity. Uh, we regret that Congress participants uh, didn't visit Lake Baikal, but we hope for future meetings in Baikal. Mm, I still lie on a stone uh, near 100 meters away from me, and I hid behind the large stone and shot seal a recent photo from Baikal. Uh, thank you for attention. Any question? Thank you very much, and we go on. Uh, and I uh, invite uh, Dr. Reski Anandarianta from Indonesia.
Let serotonin uptake was not significantly different with patient with BDI more than 10 uh, versus non than 10. And then the uh, lower serotonin uptake phase in the depressed patient ACS when compared to the depression stable CAD patient. The, for the in, incidence of minor and minor uh, interferes, you can see here there's a patient with BDI more than 10 significantly has a major and minor adverse cardiac event at 12 months after the study enrollment with the frequency of uh, adverse event at 18 percent. But the patient uh, of the minor event during 12 months serotonin is uh, has a greater uh, platelet response to serotonin. Uh, as compared to patient with non-depression patient. This is the second study from the Shins at all in 2024. Uh, to, to, uh, it is the abstract of the patient. Uh, the goal of the study is to investigate the depression patient has a higher marker platelet activation such using the beta thromboglobulin, that's a factor 4, and soluble CD4 ligand and higher serotonin level than non-depression patient. Uh, but this study also has a uh, therapeutic with using the metazipine in the patient, with, which uh, we don't really evaluate in the study. This is the baseline characteristic. There's no significant uh, other than prevalence the patient or BDI in patients. Uh, after we use the regression analysis, that there show that the depression was not predicted of uh, beta level, nor the PF4 level, so there's no correlation between there. And the effect of being depression of the beta tegel level and PF4 remain non significant after control the potential corresponding fault factor. Uh, after the further uh, analysis using multivariate regression uh, with the uh, beta tegel being a dependent variable, we say that the depression predicted uh, beta tegel level is pay in 0.57 and platelet found predict the beta tegel level significantly. This is the measurement between the patient with non-depressed and no depressed. There is a difference in platelet serotonin and also SCDL 40L and in the patient with depressed and non-depressed patient. And after we evaluate, we get that a whole body uh, serotonin and platelet serotonin uh, is higher in depression and post myocardial infarct patient compared with non-depression patient. After using the bivariate regression model, we get that uh, there's predicted platelet serotonin using the P is 0 0.07. Uh, after that, uh, the study also used uh, counting the multivariate regression model with four predict predictor, which is the depression and then the age, uh, PAF, and the medication versus infrastructure treatment uh, to, uh, to, to evaluate the condition of inflation. So the discussion of my study is that the, the first study that we left is the largest study in this topic with the 100 uh, sample, which there's a greater platinum serotonin to a receptor density patient with major uh, depressive disorder, but it's related to ACS smoking diabetes after we use the adjustment. And the study also showed that the higher incidence of cardiac event in patient with depression and cardiac disease, but no increase in platelet dysfunction. Patient with major minor adverse event has even uh, increased response to serotonin, but not in the major event. And the strength of the first study is the large number, uh, but the limitation was the low number of depression and also the problem of evaluation the, of PCA and serotonin. From the second study, it was found that there's the increase in serotonin and platelet serotonin level, but not increase in platelet activation in the uh, in part with depression uh, with, if we compare to patient without depression. The whole blood serotonin and platelet serotonin were higher in the fresh patients, uh, but it has to be taken account that the parameters as beta triglyceride, TG, and PA4 are strongly influenced by stress other than the depression in the patient. The previous study uh, also said that there's increase of serotonin receptor density in the depression without the cardiovascular event or cardiovascular disease. But uh, the study also showed that there's a decrease in density in patients with depression also. So yeah, there's still unclear uh, results about this condition. And the theory of serotonin is uh, related because this the idea that the use of serotonin is a risk factor of uh, pathophysiology and it increases the receptor density in patient with depression and also in the myocardial infarct. From the older study, we see that uh, there's postulated that depression will be related to increased platelet uh, serotonin and increased platelet serotonin in depression post myocardial infarct patient is suspected due to the uh, the, the, the the damage in the uptake and the serotonin synthesis, decrease of degradation, and also the 
uh, promoter gen uh, increase uh, genotype. So the for the conventional home study is there's a relation between the cardiovascular disease and depression showed by the serotonin and also the serotonin activation. But until now, there's still no uh, clear mechanism that can bridge to this, this condition. From my study, uh, we see the glimpse of the uh, the relation between two, and my, I think it is uh, still needed a uh, further research with, to know the real and the factual change between the depressive and also the cardiovascular disease. Uh, this from me. This is my reverence. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. I am particularly honored to have been invited to speak at the 19th Congress of Asia uh, College of Psychosomatic Medicine. Uh, my name is Mu Xiali, come from Fuyang People's Hospital affiliated to Anhui Medicine University. Today, the topic of my presentation is association between neurovenous tissue plasminogen activator and post-stroke depression in young adults. Here is the outline for today. Decrease the energy motivation. Uh, affect affect the neurological rehabilitation and the treatment. Increase the rate of disability, and the recurrence bring a heavy burden to the society and the economic. Uh, especially in young adults, which are the backbone of family and uh, society. Early identification and the targeted treatment can improve the situation. Uh, several studies have demonstrated that the physical disability caused by stroke is one of the most important factors related to post-stroke depression. Uh, intravenous surrounding thesis is the most effective treatment in the uh, hyperacute Faced by opening the occluded vessel earlier and uh, restoring blood flow to achieve improvement of uh, neurologically defensive system. Compared with no reperfusion, thrombus, uh, compared with no reperfusion, uh, thrombolysis using ITPA has been demonstrated in randomized trials to improve three months and one year to 1.5 year functional outcomes after IQ ischemic stroke. Uh, however, the relationship between thrombolytic treatment and uh, post-stroke depression in young adults has not been well delineated. The aims of the present study were first to compare the frequency of depressive symptoms in ischemic stroke survivors in young adults who were treated and non-treated with RTPA, and second, secondly to identify risk factors for post-stroke depression in young adults. Let's move to the research uh, objects and methods. 
210 young patients with ischemic stroke diagnosed in Fuyang People's Hospital affiliated to Anhui Medical University uh, from June 2000 and, uh, 2017 to December 2021 were consecutively included in the study, including 155 males and 55 females with an average age of uh, 14. Point seventy one uh, add add uh, uh, subtract uh, uh, three point and uh, twelve four years. The thrombinetic the thrombinetic group and the non thrombinetic group were divided according to whether intravenous thrombolysis with RTPA was used or not. Inclusion criteria. One, meeting the diagnostic criteria in the Chinese guidelines for the diagnosis and the treatment of acute ischemic stroke. Two, age uh, 18 to 45 years. Three, uh, clear consciousness. Uh, four, patients in the Thrombolysis group met the indications for intravenous thrombolysis and signed the informed consent form of for intravenous uh, thrombolysis. Exclusion criteria: one, combined uh, depression and other psychiatric disorders; uh, two, anti anxiety and depression drugs or other drugs affecting the mental and the emotional well-being will be used during the study. Uh, three, uh, cognitive decline. Four, aphasia, severe language communication difficulties. Five, proposed uh, um, arterial branding therapy. Uh, six in perfect clinical data. Um, demographic data such as age and uh, gender, duration of hospital, uh, duration of hospitalization, educational level, leisure location, uh, need score, MMSE score, social support. Uh, previous history of ischemic stroke and uh, uh, HLP uh, and other cerebrovascular risk factors were combined. We used uh, the usual treatment. A clinical without the knowledge of the patient's clinical data, but with standardized uh, training assessors. The patient's depression using the HAMD 17 at 14 days and three months after the one set of stroke, and the need score at admission 14 days and three months after the one set of stroke. The need score was used to evaluate the severity of stroke at admission 14 days after the one set of stroke and three months after the one set of stroke. The diagnosis of post-stroke depression was made with references to the Chinese experts' consensus on the clinical practice of post-stroke depression uh, with a HAMD 17 score less than uh, 7 without depression and greater than or equal to 7 uh, diagnosing post-stroke depression. SPSS 23 software was used for uh, statistic analysis. Here are the results of our research. The incidence of post-stroke depression at 14 days of one set was 19.1% uh, in the uh, trembling thesis group and uh, uh, 31% in the non traveling CC group. And the uh, difference in the incidence of post stroke depression 
between the two groups were statistically uh, significant. The incidence of post-stroke depression at three months of onset was 12.9% uh, in the uh, traveling thesis group and 28% uh, 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 in the non traveling thesis group. And uh, the difference in the incidence of post-stroke depression was not statistically significant when comparing the two groups. The 210 young stroke patients were divided into a mild group, uh, need score less than or equal to uh, eight, and a moderate severe uh, group, a uh, need score greater than eight, according to the stroke severity using the need score. The incidence of post-stroke depression at 14 days of onset was 17.8% uh, in the mild group and 13.7% uh, uh, in the moderate severe group with a statistically significant difference in the incidence of post-stroke depression between the two groups. The incidence of post-stroke depression at three months of one set was 17.4% in the mild group and 13.5% uh, uh, in the moderate severe group with a statistically significant differences in the incidence of post-stroke depression between the two groups. Young stroke patients were divided into post-stroke depression and non-post-stroke depression groups according to whether PSD occurred. Juno uh, variety analysis at 14 days of uh, one set showed statistically significant differences between the two groups in terms of uh, knee score at 14 days of one set. Whether uh, intravenous Throbbing thesis was performed. Factors were uh, that differed in the unit variety analysis was included in the negative uh, regression analysis as uh, independent variables variables. And uh, post-stroke depression was used as the independent variable and uh, the results showed that the knee score at 14 days of one set and whether or not the intravenous thriving thesis was the influential factors for post-stroke depression at 14 days of one set. And sure in the table, uh, factors with statistically significant differences between the two groups in unit variety analysis at uh, three months of one set include knee score at uh, three months of one set educational level and uh, social support. Multi-factor regression analysis showed the need score at three months of one set and social support were influential factors of post-stroke depression at three months of one set. And then I'd like to uh, summarize what I have said so far. The incidence of post-stroke is, is post
today, the topic of my presentation is the partner and management strategy of psychocardiology in the cardiovascular department of traditional Chinese medicine. As doctors delivery health care, the focus of our attention has been on the specific physical condition rather than the patient as a whole. Less attention has been given to psychological health and how that can contribute to physical health and disease. However, there is now an increasing appreciation of how psychological health can contribute not only in a negative way to cardiovascular disease, but also in a positive way to better cardiovascular health and reduce cardiovascular risk. The American Heart Association also believes that more attention should be paid to psychological health, well-being, and the mind-heart-body connection. For traditional Chinese medicine, the link between psychological factors and physical illness is discussed in the Huangdi's canon of medicine. More and more studies have confirmed the clear advantages of Chinese medicine in treating anxiety and depression in patients with cardiovascular disease. Now, here is the outline for today's presentation. First one, assessment. When patients come to see a doctor, we should assess their psychological profile and social risk factors first. Commonly used assessment skills are PHQ-9, JD-7, HAMA, HAMD. In China, the serial of five partner personality traits which originated from traditional Chinese medicine and the ancient philosophy of yin and yang has been viewed as the most culturally characteristic serial for classifying individuals into the five partners of tai yang, shao yang, ping he, shao yin, and tai yin, based on yin yang differences. The five partner personality inventory a standardized personality skill based on this serial was established as the China Academic of Traditional Chinese Medicine. The concept of yin and yang determines individual characteristic of personality according to the serial of TCM. Yang denotes excitement and extroversion, while yin denotes inhibition and introversion. Besides, the concept of Tai and Shao representing emotional instability, stability denotes the abstraction in the quantities of Yang and Yin. It is noteworthy that Ping He is a particular conception in the five partner personality serial that represents a comprehensive personality that is characterized by balance. We often use it to help partner identification and treatment. Now, let us see the treatment in TCM. Theory of Region Gentle Syndrome Differentiation, which Professor Zhao Zhifu developed from the Region Gentle Theory in the Huangdi's canon of medicine, was mainly based on the treatment of the liver and put forward the system theory of the liver was damaged firstly in psychosomatic disease. This can lead to an imbalance in the govern free flow of qi of the liver, which can occur in two ways, too much and not enough. If the patient has an anxious temperament, the liver will govern free flow of qi too much. We call it a regent syndrome. If the patient is introverted, the liver will govern free flow of qi not enough. We call it a gentle syndrome.
Patients who are rage syndrome tend to be irritable and obsessive with flushed face, yellow coated tongue, and or the stomach. Patients who are gentle syndrome tend to be easy to tired and uh, emaciated with colorless face, white cotton tongue, and stench. Patients with rage syndrome generally are edge impatient active, expressive, with high and fast voice. Patients with gentle syndrome generally are temperate, patient, quiet, intercalate, with soft and slow voice. Let us move on to the non-pharmacological treatment. First of all, acupuncture treatment. Anxiety and depression belong to Yu disease in Chinese medicine. Acupuncture points on the Garvin vessel, the Jueyin channel, and are used to cause the liver and resetify qi. DU20, DU26, DU29 were used to quiet the spirit and stabilize the mind. IR3, PC6, HT7 were used to cause the liver and resetify qi. Electric acupuncture and abdominal acupuncture can also be used. Air point. Air point helps to regulate the internal organs and relieve the symptoms of depression and anxiety. According to organ partner identification, the liver point and the heart point are often used. The herbal food bath is also a simple and easy treatment that patients can perform independently. Patients can take a warm water food bath before bedtime to improve the quality of their sleep and relax the mind. Psychotherapy in Chinese medicine was first developed as early as the Hongdi's canon of medicine period. Mutual culture therapy of emotion. When one kind of emotion is too extreme, it will injure its corresponding internal organs and cause illness. The doctor can balance it with another kind of superior emotion. Zhu Yu therapy. The doctor guides the patient to identify the cause of their illness and then guides the patient to change the behaviors that uh, precipitate the illness. Language enlightened method. The doctor first uh, makes the patient aware of the dangers of his disease and uh, guides him to understand it correctly. Secondly, informs the prognosis of the disease and improves his confidence and cooperation in treatment. Third, informs him of the current treatment options and the daily regimen. Fourth, identifies the patient's worries and gives him guidance to relieve his mental stress. The next one, suggestion therapy. An indirect method of intervening in the patient's psychological condition to build confidence or change their negative emotions and behavior. We can also introduce traditional Chinese fitness to patient. For example, Ba Duan Jin exercise with its low intensity, slow and coordinated movement is easy to learn. Modern research have shown that Ba Duan Jin can reduce the symptom of depression and anxiety in patients with physical or mental illness. Now let's move on to the life care. According to the Huangdi's canon of medicine period, there are five principles of life care. The first is to adapt to the changes of yin and yang in the four seasons. Secondly, we can use appropriate methods that suit us. The third is to pay attention to the harmony of hunger and satiety, cold and warmth, and the five tastes of the diet. Fourth, balance in life and rest. The fifth is to pay attention to the combination of work and rest.
The above Chinese medicine interventions are relatively independent and interrelated and can be applied together in clinical practice to further improve clinical efficacy. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Hello, I'm Associate Professor Yulia Paponina from Tom's Russia, and my paper is entitled Possibilities for Reducing Cardiovascular Risk in a Comorbid Patient with Acute Coronary Syndrome Associated with Anxiety and Depressive Disorders. Psychological Intervention in COVID-19 Patients. Psychological studies in isolation wards have shown that about 48% of confirmed COVID-19 patients experienced psychological stress when they were admitted early. High risk of delirium is presented among critically ill patients. Anxiety and depressive symptoms appear as a result of fears for one's own health or the health of others. The need for physical isolation, which can lead to social isolation, the potential risk of death, fear of infecting others, and concern for family members left behind who may need help. Some patients may have panic attacks. The mental state of patients, individual psychological stress, mood, sleep quality, should be monitored every week after admission and before discharge. Testing using the hospital anxiety and depression scale is recommended. In special settings, such as isolation rooms, we suggest that patients should be guided to complete questionnaires via their mobile phones. Physicians can be interviewed and evaluate the scale through face-to-face -face or online discussion. It is necessary to promptly identify symptoms symptoms of anxiety and depression, assess their severity and initiate psychosocial support strategies and first-line interventions to manage existing impairments in uncomplicated patients. For patients of moderate to severe severity, intervention and treatment, such as a combination of drug treatment and psychotherapy is offered. New antidepressants, anxiolytics, and benzodiazepines may be prescribed to improve mood and sleep quality. Second generation antipsychotics may be used to reduce psychotic symptoms such as illusion and delusion. Anxiety and depressive symptoms are detected in the first 72 hours of acute coronary syndrome. The frequency of occurrence of anxiety and depressive disorders after acute myocardial infarction is 25-30%. Coexisting depression, anxiety, and cardiovascular pathology mutually aggravate the cause of the disease, complicate treatment. Delayed treatment of affective disorders worsens the cause of a somatic disease. The effectiveness of ongoing therapy is largely determined by the extent to which the patient follows the specified recommendations or adherence. Although more than 80% of the global burden of cardiovascular disease occurs in low-income and middle-income countries, knowledge of the importance of risk factors is largely derived from developed countries. In 2004, the results of a, an inter-heart study were published that included 29,000 patients from 52 countries and showed the role of nine modifiable factors responsible for the occurrence of acute myocardial infarction. Abnormal lipids, smoking, psychosocial factors, hypertension, diabetes, abdominal obesity, consumption of fruits, vegetables, and alcohol, and regular physical activity account for most of the risk of myocardial infarction worldwide in both sexes and at all ages in all regions. Depression aggravates the clinical cause of coronary 
heart disease and affects its prognosis of coronary heart disease. The Russian multi-center studies compass and coordinator showed not only the high prevalence but also a poor detection of anxiety and depressive disorders among patients with cardiovascular pathology. Depression is an independent predictor of mortality in patients with established coronary artery disease. Mortality in patients with myocardial infarction suffering from depression is three to six times higher than in patients without mental disorders. Timely undiagnosed and uncorrected anxiety depressive disorders in cardiac patients contribute to the recurrence of repeated adverse coronary events in the next one to five years. Aim of the study. To study the possibilities of reducing cardiovascular risk when prescribing a drug based on technologically processed antibodies to the brain-specific S100 protein in high dilution tenotem in patients with acute coronary syndrome associated with anxiety depressive disorders. Criteria for exclusion for inclusion in the study include myocardial infarction with abnormal Q wave, acute myocardial infarction without pathological Q wave or unstable angina. Adjustment disorders of the type of mixed anxiety depressive reaction, generalized anxiety disorder, mixed anxiety depressive disorder, absence of taking drugs with psychotropic activity for at least a week before the start of the study and during it, written informed consent of the patient. Criteria for exclusion from the study. Severe comorbid somatic pathology, cognitive impairments that limit contact with the patient, bipolar depression, pre previous therapy with psychotropic drugs, refusal of the patient to conduct the necessary research. Materials and methods. The hospital anxiety and depression scale was used to identify the presence of symptoms of anxiety and depression. In the first group, against the background of acute coronary syndrome therapy, tenotin, six tablets per day, was additionally prescribed, and in the second group, a placebo. During hospitalization and after six months of observation, the dynamics of clinical and mental status was monitored. This slide shows the study design. In order to detect the presence of symptoms of anxiety and depression, the hospital anxiety and depression scale was used at the, sc at the screening. So out of 250 patients that was admitted to the department, 85 patients showed symptoms of anxiety and depression. F 54 patients were randomized into two groups. In the first group, along with background of standard acute coronary syndrome therapy, the anxiolytic tenotem, six tablets per day, was additionally prescribed. And in the second group, placebo. During hospitalization, and after six months of observation and 24-hour hold monitoring of electrocardiogram, echocardiography, and control of mental status and sleep quality were performed. The clinical characteristics of patients in both groups did not differ statistically significantly. And here is the same about the clinical characteristics. All patients were initially diagnosed with clinically significant anxiety according to the hospital anxiety and depression scale and Shihan anxiety scale. And after six months, only in the group of supplementary administration of Jonathan, there was a positive trend in the form of decrease in the level of anxiety.
In both study groups, clinically significant depression was determined. After six months, there was a statistically significant reduction in depression in tenaten supplementation group and in the placebo group, mental status remained unchanged. In both study groups, patients noted difficulty falling asleep, short sleep with frequent nocturnal awakenings, multiple dreams, dissatisfaction with quality of sleep and awakening. No statistically significant differences were found between the groups. After six months, patients of the first group noted an improvement in the quality of sleep, the time to fall asleep decreased, the duration of sleep increased, the frequency of night awakenings decreased, the quality of sleep and awakening improved. In the placebo group, the quality of sleep remained as before unsatisfactory. After six months from randomization in the Timaten group, a significant increase in ejection fraction of the left ventricle 58% was found and also decrease in the left ventricular volumetric parameters was found on echocardiography. Echocardiography showed a negative trend in the placebo group a statistically significant decrease in ejection fra fraction, fraction and increase in the volume indicators of left ventricle. Assessment of structural and functional indicators of myocardium has established a positive trend in the form of improvement of myocardial contractility, decrease in left ventricle volume parameters in the 10 10 groups, which helps to slow down the processes of left ventricle remodeling, thereby improving the prognosis of patients who have had myocardial infarction of, or an episode of unstable angina. Conclusion. Patients who have undergone acute coronary syndrome remain at a high risk of developing cardiovascular complications. Appointment of the anti-anxiety drug Tenaten for six months leads to an improvement of the mental status, quality of life, and sleep of the patients, slowing down the process of left ventricular, ventricular remodeling, thereby improving the prognosis of the patient. After hypertension, and is considered to be a common everyday type of both diseases are common in outpatient medicine and have social economic significance. The prevalence of AH and TTH overlap syndrome is from 50% to 93%. 30% of patients with headache have a history of AH, and on patients with TTH, the prevalence of AH is two times higher than in on patients with migraine. 85% of patients with AH complain of headache. The prevalence of TTH among them is 15. Psychopathological conditions are often common with conditions of somatic pathology. Anxiety disorders constitute the main part of the clinical picture of psychopathology. This slide presents the diagnostic criteria of TTH by international classification of headache disorders. We will abbreviate ACHD, third, uh, third to the last region, according to which TTH ha uh, can have a pulsating quality or a moderate intensity, uh, be accompanied by phonophobia or mild nausea, but it's important is often parameters are mid. Therefore, there are difficulties in diagnosing of the phenotype AH and TTH. Associated with a similar clinical picture of TTH, especially if it proceeds 
uh, not quite classically, and they contributed to AH. According to ICH the third, they contributed to AH. Uh, it first to a headache attributed to disorders of homeostasis. This slide presents the diagnostic criteria of headache attributed to AH uh, by uh, ICAD3. Uh, it's important to note that only headache parallel to sudden and significant rise of blood pressure is related to this type of headache. In all other cases, uh, this is a primary headache, and uh, as we say earlier, most open is uh, in the TTH. Anxiety is a trigger for a headache episode. Thus, it has been uh, repeatedly shown that the uh, level of anxiety in patients with TTH and migraine was statistically significantly higher compared to uh, healthy waters. Anxiety is more common among patients with uh, chronic and frequent episodic TH. The intensity of headache uh, in TH also correlates with the presence of anxiety. Anxiety is also a trigger uh, for increase in blood pressure. Thus, it has been shown that among patients with AH, a high level of both personal and situational anxiety was uh, more often noted. Also, poor blood pressure control was associated with high anxiety level. Today, we will present the results of our pilot study. The aim uh, of our research was um, the frequency study of anxiety and the overlap syndrome AH and PPH comorbidity in middle aged adults. The above study are presented on the slide. The research is a part of a comprehensive study of the topic clinical and genetic predictors of AH and PPH overlap syndrome and was supported by intra university grant of for young scientists uh, of the Grosnet State Medical University. The sample consisted of 63 people. The participants were divided in, into three groups. The main group, uh, 19 patients with clinical phenotype AH and uh, TTH. Uh, comparable group, uh, 33 patients with hypertension. Control group, um, 31 uh, healthy volunteers. Participants were tested using five scales to identify anxiety depressive disorders. Uh, participants uh, ranged in age from um, 35 to 65 years, uh, which is in line uh, with uh, World Health Organization median age. The mean age was 52.9 years. Uh, the participants included um, 22 men and uh, 41 women. The groups were comparable uh, in terms of age and gender. All the results. Neurotism is an indicator of the emotional instability of the person taking into account general emotionality and ability to control emotions. The level of neurotism was considered as a factor in the predisposition of the individual to the development of anxiety and depressive disorders. We have shown that emotional instability among patients of the main group was statistically significantly higher than among frontal and comparable groups. So patients with the phenotype AH and TTH in the study sample were more anxiety compared with the control and comparable group. Self-assessment of anxiety, frustration, aggressiveness and rigidity method allows to access personal characteristics. 
but into a case scale, the level of anxiety disorders in patients of the main group was also statistically significantly higher than in patients of the control group. The Spielberg group state uh, treat and personality anxiety inventory scale allows to access both personal and situational anxiety. The level of personal anxiety was statistically significantly higher only among patients with phenotype compared to the control, which is consistent with the results of the scale of emotional stability and stability and the uh, self-assessment of anxiety, frustration, aggressiveness, and rigidity method. This also confirms the relationship between emotional lability and the subsequent development of anxiety and the age in patients with hypertension. The level of situational anxiety in turn was statistically significantly higher, higher both in main and the in the comparable group compared to the control. Thus, it was shown that situational anxiety is a clinically significant comorbid disorder, not only in patients with phenotype, but also in those with isolated hypertension. Other results are of the back depression and anxiety inventory scale are consistent with the results of Spielberg scale. That is, according to the results of this questionnaire, anxiety as a reaction to the external terms was also a clinically significant and frequent comorbid disorder of both the AH, plus DTH phenotype, and isolated AH. The result of the hospital anxiety and depression scale showed statistically significant differences between the main and comparable groups. Thus, it was shown that more anxious patients with hypertension have a great risk of developing TTH. High level of neurotism and personal anxiety are factors predisposing to the development of TTH in patients with AH. Therefore, anxiety as a personality trait is a predictor of the Avalab syndrome, AH and TTH development. And it's important to consider that patients with AH who have an individual tendency to anxiety development uh, are at risk of TTH development. In addition, it can be concluded that anxiety itself um, as a condition, uh, have a frequent comorbid disorder in patients with AH and TTH. So we can say about Avalab syndrome. I thank my scientific supervisor and the organizing committee of the Congress for the opportunity to present our research today. There are our contacts. We are open and ready for the cooperation. Thank you for your attention. Good day. Dear colleague, report present psychiatr Alexey Konstantinovich Kostin. Я вас прошу, пожалуйста. Let me present uh, your um, a report on the uh, dedicated to the, to the topic prognostic factors of, for coronary artery disease in patients with anxiety and depressive disorders comorbidity and search for solution guidelines published in 2021 by european society of cardiologists play significant role <coughs> Uh, for psych uh, psychological factors such as mental disorders, mental health care, and uh, psychological interventions. Also, the assessment of psychological factors is uh, very important, and uh, in this uh, guideline, it's uh, going through as a red line. Our <coughs> investigation, uh, we were 
our investigation were on based on the Mental Health Research Institute Department, uh, Department of Borderline Conditions. The study included 134 patients aged from 37 and to 60 year, uh, 6 years old, which has an established diagnosis of coronary artery disease and identified anxiety and depressive disorders against the background of cardiac symptoms. The assessment of significant cardiovascular, mental, and uh, psychological factors is predicting comorbid conditions in patients with coronary artery disease was carried out using the logistic regression method. Results. In our clinic, we determine clinically pronounced symptoms of depression in uh, 42 persons of our patients, excited symptoms in 25 persons of our patients, and combined manifestations of anxiety, depression, and asthenia in 33 persons of our patients. Study presents the results predicting comorbid conditions with coronary artery disease, where the probability, the prediction was about 95.2 persons, and also established the features of formation. The spectrum of predictors included the logistic model, along the well-known factors such as arterial hypertension, dyslipidemia, uh, diabetes mellitus type 2, fatty liver disease, metabolically associated, Predictors of psychological nature and mental, mental disorders turned out to be significant. The duration of mental disorder, the diagnosis of mental disorder, psychosocial stress, anxiety and depressive disorders associated with psychosocial stress predicted diagnosis of CAD in men by average of 2.7 years, making early recognition very difficult. On this slide, you can see different predictor uh, factors predicting <coughs> coronary artery disease in men. These also well known uh, such a factors as age of the patient, dyslipidemia, abnormalities of heart rhythm, uh, <coughs> arterial hypertension, also depressive disorders, fear of death uh, in case of panic disorders, diabetes mellitus part two. Family history of cancer pathology. It's very important, especially for men, and it's connected to the cardio oncology and psycho oncology. It's a very, very important problem nowadays. Duration of the mental disorder plays a significant role in uh, factors predicting their card. Also, social maladaptation, psychological stress, in <clears throat> fatal liver disease, and in men it's very important. Usually uh, we de determine anosognosia. Men uh, think that they are very healthy and, do, and usually very low compliance to the treatment. For men, uh, Psychological factors are the, <clears throat> such as stressful life events, such as death or loss or serious illness of beloved one, stress on the work, uh, dismissal and uh, loss of job, patient <clears throat> medical problems. In clinical terms, there is a dependence of an acute coronary event or non-lethal myocardial infection that developed the background of the severe depressive episodes in 11 patients who experienced extreme stress, deaths of the loved one, on average four months before the onset of acute cardiac symptoms. On the next slide, you can see this uh, in diagram, diagram duration of uh, depression and anxiety symptoms and uh, acute coronary syndrome and myocardial infection, about four months between them. And uh, sometimes conditions beginning from anxiety and depression lead patients to the myocardial infection. This is uh, <coughs> the data from another investigation. Play, uh, 
difference between patients with uh, ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease with depression or without depression. You can see such a factor as a psychosocial stress. In case of uh, patient with a, a severe depression, it's uh, much higher, significantly higher. Low level of income, lack of social welfare, disability group two or three. These persons usually became handicapped. The same investigation you can see in case uh, of uh, cardiac artery disease with depression. <clears throat> Very high level of arterial hypertension, post infarction, cardiac sclerosis, arrhythmia, diabetes mellitus type 2, <laughs> surgical re revascularization. <clears throat> nitroglycerin intake and the family history. All these uh, factors lead patients usually to disability, to became handicapped, to lower quality of life. There are a lot of different factors influence on patients. Risk factors before the cardiovascular diseases, provoking factors, progression factors, factors affecting cardiovascular disease prognosis. In our presentation, we uh, talk mostly about this kind of factors. Symptoms of cardiovascular and other somatic disease may mask in course and uh, <clears throat> requiring careful examination and different diagnosis. Factors complicating clinical diagnosis and treatment comorbid patients, specialists like therapeutists, general practitioners, cardiologists should pay a significant attention to this. Not, I think that not only therapeutists, uh, psychiatrists, uh, psychologists uh, must play a significant, <clears throat> must pay their attention to prevent the development of cardiovascular disease. On this slide, you can see the main authors, authors of this report. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the authors, thank you for your attention. On, on this slide, you can see some pictures of our beautiful town, Tomsk, our alma mater, Tomsk Medical State University, with treating and educating since 1888. Thank you. Thank you very much.